from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Special coverage sponsored by AWS Global Partner Network. Okay, welcome back to theCUBE, virtual coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE virtual. We're not there in person. We're doing remote interviews, bringing that content to you virtually. Obviously with the virtual event over three weeks, wall to wall coverage. Got a great guest here, Norman Guadagno, Chief Marketing Officer for Acoustic. Norman, great to have you on theCUBE. Great story I want to get into, independent marketing cloud, all that good stuff. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, John. I'm excited to chat with you and it's exciting uh, during reInvent. Yeah, a lot of great stuff. I mean, just every year I just get kind of nerdy and I nerd out on all the massive new stuff. And some of it's kind of, you know, futuristic, you know, not yet available, but most of it is. Um, but let's get into what you guys do. So first, tell me the story about Acoustic. And you guys were originally part of IBM spun out and now independent. Take us through what happened. Yeah, sure. It's, it's actually a super fascinating story overall because uh, in short, Acoustic was created uh, last year, July 2019, as a, as a carve out from IBM. Uh, the interesting history is that over the course of oh, about a decade, IBM said, hmm, this marketing technology space is pretty interesting. So it went and acquired a number of companies across multiple years, pulled it all together in what it called IBM Watson Marketing ultimately, and said, we're in the marketing technology space. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out that's probably not a core business for IBM. So uh, a few years ago, someone said, hmm, maybe we're not in this space. Let's see if we can put this, carve this out. And so we were born last July. We are private equity owned and uh, from a, a great history became a great new beginning. Awesome, so talk about the, the, the value proposition. You guys are leading here, um, says you guys are the independent marketing cloud. Does that mean independent in the sense of you don't take a position on certain technologies or independent as a company, just what does that mean? Boy, independent used to be a simple word, but it doesn't have, so, it's not so simple <laughs> anymore now, is it? Uh, you know, what we mean by that is very straightforward. One, uh, we are uh, private and we are focused on marketing and marketers, and we are not beholden to other parts of the business that may be trying to serve back office or finance or uh, other elements in a business. And what we think that uh, the marketer today, which as you know, marketers usually have the, or one of the biggest IT budgets in a company, we think they need providers that are focused on their needs and their needs only. Yeah, it's interesting, the MarTech stack, and I was just had a conversation with a venture capitalist live on the uh, kick kickoff of the program uh, for the show review. It, there's pre-cloud, there's cloud transition. Now you got all in cloud benefits of being cloud native, right? So you kind of 2021, I think we're in this post COVID era. You're yeah. going to see a whole new set of advantages. Yeah, they'll still be hybrid. They'll still be on-premise. But if you look at the all the MarTech, marketing technology stuff, it's just so much stuff. And Salesforce just bought Slack. You have Microsoft team, the big guys, all these things. and you only have a, departments don't have a lot of staff, right? It's not like no, no, you know, not at all. It's so it, so it you is, need it, technology to try to great do that heavy lifting. This is a big theme of, of the Amazon reinvent culture. Using it, tech, it create the customer value, reduce the heavy lifting. How are you guys doing that? How do you serve customers yeah, in that competitive it, landscape? It, it, it's well set up, John, because the, the reality is that. Uh, we have a lot, there's a lot of companies in the marketing technology space. You can look at charts online. There are 8,000 companies evidently. Uh, and the reality is that a very few of those companies are trying to provide big sort of end-to-end -end solutions the way that we are and some of our, our large competitors are. Uh, but they're all at different stages of their evolution in the cloud because most of the bigger companies in this space got their MarTech capabilities through acquisition. And they may have to sort of carry forward a pre-cloud uh, technology stack with them. What we're trying to do is really two things. One, we've moved our technology to the cloud and in particular, you know, over 90% of our workload is on AWS now. And we're trying to find the, the integration points with our customers where they're equally moving to public cloud like AWS and give them the capability of being able to bring up capabilities quickly, particularly in something like email, 
able to scale, right? We're in the middle of the holiday season. It's the busiest time of the year for businesses to send email. And we want to make sure that our customers can scale up. We want them to have that capability. And we want to be able to take advantage of that so we don't have to overinvest in back-end technology. We want marketers to feel as empowered as the CIO who's you're saying, oh, I'm all in on the cloud. Well, what about the marketers? They're the ones who should be using that. And, and I think something like AWS is going to continue to grow and, the, and the, the capabilities at every part of AWS will continue to provide value to the marketers, to the customer experience team, as well as to the IT team. How are you guys using data and AI? Because obviously you're seeing that huge part of every single product. It's one of those things that you see, and, and we've been seeing for years now, it's kind of mainstream. The benefit of the cloud is you get horizontal scalability of infrastructure. Now you got Lambda, now you got containers, and then you got data you can get vertically specialized within the app. So if you do the microservices or deconstruct the monolith, you could really provide point value and still get that data scale. So this opens up massive data intelligence opportunities, which every marketer wants to be data driven. You know, so, uh, or, you know, or, or use the data to make a great user experience or customer experience. Mm -hmm. How do you guys see that in acoustic and what are you guys doing in the cloud around that? Can you share? Yeah. Well, first of all, somehow you got a hold of our, uh, our confidential roadmap because you just laid it out right there and what you said, now, it's not so confidential. <laughs> but that, uh, the, the reality it's, is- It's that, market leading for sure. I mean, I think if you can, that's a holy grail. I mean- that's Right, what, it's that's where everyone right. wants to be. And uh, we at, at Acoustic have a, a very specific philosophy is that we want to, we want to embrace data. And we mean, of course, on behalf of our customers, and we want to bring data to empower every, app, every application and every part of the marketer's business. And for better or worse, there's some marketing technologies sort of have a little bit of a, uh, a little hands off with data, particularly if it's not their own data. We believe that whether it's first party, second party, third party data, it needs to be brought into the marketing life cycle. And we are building or have built capabilities to do that. We believe in being open. We believe in being able to bring in all sorts of different data types and then use that to build the best marketing campaigns and experiences for our customers and for their customers. And if you're not embracing all the types of data out there and creating a unique formula for each particular customer, you're not going to deliver the best marketing experience. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think one of these things where modern applications, there's two themes here, modern applications and then completely programmable infrastructure for Amazon. And this, again, I've been covering cloud for many, many years since the beginning of cloud. And I've looked at all the big three and I see Amazon has been clearly winning on the infrastructure at the service platform as a service. They, they, yeah, they have SaaS apps out there, but they have an ecosystem. Microsoft has their own strategy, Google the other. You picked Amazon as a preferred partner. Could you share um, why, why Amazon and what specifically does that enable you to do uh, as a company? Because, um, yeah, Amazon's huge and some people get nervous. Like, okay, Amazon, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna eat me up and you're in a marketing <laughs> focus, not a, not a core, they don't have a core building block out there called marketing cloud like Oracle does or mm -hmm. some other companies. Why Amazon? Yeah, I, I think that you really sort of laid the landscape out well and Amazon is very much a, uh, a full stack and, and there's so much maturity in AWS overall, which, you don't necessarily see the sort of top to bottom maturity that you see in the other public clouds. And Amazon and all clouds, right? We, we all want to be able to tap into microservices. So when we were trying to figure out what gave us the scalability that we needed, we were really focused on the ability to integrate at multiple touch points, the ability to scale up really fast because like during the holiday season, we're transacting yeah billions of transactions, whether it be emails that our customers are sending or SMS messages that they're sending. So billions of transactions over a fixed period of time. We need to be able to scale quickly at an affordable price. And we also believe that actually a lot of marketing departments are going to start to realize the value of plugging into the services available in a public cloud. 
particularly as they see things such as taking data from third and third parties, right? How do they get that into the system? Or taking their marketing stacks and ultimately may potentially putting those stacks in containers, right? How do you move that into a container and be able to quickly connect other microservices to that container? So we think that this is the, the absolute future of where the marketing department is gonna end up. And we think Amazon and AWS can be a great partner because it gives you that global footprint, gives you that ability to scale and gives you the richest set of services available right now. That was a really easy decision for us. Awesome stuff. Thanks for coming on, Norma. Really appreciate you laying out your vision of the cloud. Take a minute real quick. We got a couple uh, minute left. Put the plug out for Acoustic. What are you guys looking to do? What's the value proposition? Give a plug for the company. Yeah, we, we love talking about Acoustic and you can certainly visit us at acoustic.com. Uh, Acoustic is a full service marketing platform. We are modern, we are cloud-based. And one of the things that we do is we specialize and focus on marketing and the marketing function. And if anybody out there is interested in finding out more, you can not only come to acoustic.com, you can ping me because we believe that marketers our key decision makers and myself as our CMO wants to talk to every potential client. Norman, thanks for coming on. Norman Guadalho, Chief Marketing Officer, Acoustic, here featured on theCUBE for AWS reInvent. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. It was Thank a pleasure, John. Thank you. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. More coverage after this short break. Stay with us for more CUBE Live coverage. Mm -hmm.